pho. Everybody loves these brothy noodles that they have at a pho restaurant, but for whatever reason, people don't cook it at home, especially if you're not Vietnamese or Cambodian. Shout out to my Cambodian friends, you probably didn't know. Pho is popular both in Vietnam and Cambodia. But today, finally, I'm gonna be making pho for the first time. I'm going to be doing it in the most authentic way possible, except I'm gonna cut down the time from two days to about two to three hours. And I'm gonna show you the whole process. I'm gonna show you all the ingredients, how I prepare everything, and hopefully Judy and the girls love it. One of the reasons I love pho is because not only is it delicious, it's very healthy for you. So let's get right into the ingredients. I will be doing an oxtail pho just because I saw this at Costco and that's what I'm gonna use. I also have this ribeye steak, which I will be freezing and slicing thin to put on top. A lot of these ingredients are the condiments. We've got the lime, the green onions, Thai basil. I don't know why I bought Thai basil. That, that's just what they had at the Filipino grocery store and the bean sprouts. And then for the broth, I'll be adding in all of these cloves, cardamom pods, cinnamon, star anise, coriander seeds. Other things to flavor this, we've got the fish sauce. This is the Vietnamese brand. We do have the Filipino brand, but that's what I picked. Salt, MSG, and then sugar. A lot of the recipes I watch on YouTube have uh, rock sugar or like a, like a big chunk of sugar. I got these rice stick bun pho. I actually asked the auntie that was at the Filipino store. She said, yes, this is the one. So I've never cooked this. And as I mentioned, this is my first time, but I watched a ton of videos. And this by no means is to teach you how to make it. It's just to share my first experience doing this. I know authentic pho takes about two days, but I'm gonna do the three hour version. And the way I'll be doing the shortcut version is using the pressure cooker. Now, I'm not sure how much that amount of oxtail will fill this up. So I might pressure cook it in here, but then move it to the stock pot in here when I add all the other ingredients. One of the first things I'm gonna do is prepare the oxtail. The reason I'm doing this is because a lot of recipes say to boil off all the gunk. I did watch Matty Matheson. I know he's not Vietnamese, but he is a dope chef and I, I'm entertained by his videos. He just removed the gunk and then use the same water. To me, that kind of makes sense because that's a lot of flavor you could be losing. Now, I don't know why people dump all the water out, if that's maybe something because of the meat or the meat quality. I'm gonna decide if I'm gonna do that or not. But right now, what I'm gonna do is open this up, put it in here, put cold water, and then get it on the stove ASAP. Whoa. Hmm. All right, got it on the stove now. I'm gonna turn it up to high heat. I wanna get this to a rolling boil and see how much gunk comes out of it and then I will determine will I dump out all the water out or will I just remove the scum? I don't know yet. This smells so good already and it's just the oxtail in there. As you saw, I've been skimming all the junk off. In fact, I'm gonna do it right now. And the question was, was I gonna dump this water out or not? And I've decided, I'm not. Sorry to all you people that are so used to that. And let me know in the comments. I, I like to know, why is it that you dump the water out? Why I should consider doing it? The reason I'm not right now is because I'm skimming this off in the liquid below is clean looking. I don't know if it's it's a meat quality thing or it's just it's easier to dump the water out, but right now I feel like there's a lot of goodness going on underneath the surface that I don't wanna lose. I don't wanna lose in my pho broth. So I'm just gonna keep doing this for probably another seven minutes and then I'm gonna throw on the pressure cooker lid and let this thing go to town because right now 
it already smells good. Obviously, it doesn't smell like pho. I didn't put anything but the ox towel in here, but I'm just gonna keep it. Let me know in the comments. Why do some people not dump out the water? I'm curious. Okay. Listen, listen, it's way past your bedtime, but I have one question for you. Okay. Actually, two. One, does this smell good? What is that? What are you making? I'm making noodle soup right now. <laughs> Tell me, does it smell good or bad? Um. It actually smells good, I know, from her face. Okay, the good. second question is this. Hey, yeah, do you want to stay up tonight? Yeah. Are you going to scream? No. Are you going to be quiet? Yeah. Are you going to listen to your sisters? Yeah. If you give me a kiss, you can stay up tonight. Yeah. I love you. I just got my breath. Dad life. All right, so with this ribeye steak, I'm going to freeze it so that I can cut it really thin. I'm gonna put it in there for about 45 minutes. About right there. What that's gonna do is enable me to be able to cut it really thin with just my knife at home. So I'm gonna turn off the heat because it's been actually 30 minutes now. Time to pressure cook. I've already turned this off. There we go. There we go. I can tell this thing is already wanting to pre-pressurize. Put on the top. I have to start boiling it again. I want to keep the pressure on right here. Now, if you're not familiar, this is called a pressure cooker. It's exactly what it sounds like. It just keeps all the pressure inside. It takes a while to get going, but once it gets going, there's this little thing that pops up right now. And that is indicating it's pressurized. This will cut down the cooking time dramatically. So normally pho takes about two days. This, I'm gonna be cooking for 45 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, and it's gonna be amazing. Maybe even less than that, 30 minutes. But it's gonna be pressurized. One of the other things that I learned from a friend of mine, Grant, is it keeps all the flavor inside too, which totally makes sense. Afterwards, I will have another session where I add in all the other flavors, and then it's gonna, inherit the pho flavors that you know pho for. But while this is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the other ingredients. The first thing I'm gonna do is roast the aromatics and then also pan fry the spices. So let's go. So in a lot of these recipes I've seen on YouTube, they add onions and they add garlic and they roast them. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut this into halves, obviously peel it. And then this ginger, I'm just gonna wash it, peel some of the skin off, but not all of it. And then I'm also going to roast this. That'll be the base of the flavor. Done. I'm gonna go ahead and add these to the oven and to roast them, I'm just gonna broil them right underneath that flame. There we go. While the ginger and the onions roasting, I'm gonna go ahead and dry roast these on this nonstick pan. These are the spices I'm using, the cinnamon, stir anise, this is the cardamom, this is the coriander seeds, cloves. Never done this before, I've only seen videos. It calls for five star anise. I'm just gonna take half of this, about enough herbs for me to do this again in the future. Uh, maybe take some of these smaller ones. There we go. Two cardamom pods, I'm just gonna do three. And then cloves, it says four whole cloves. Just gonna go, that's enough for me. Maybe one more, because I like clove. So I'm gonna do one tablespoon of coriander seeds. I'm just gonna go ahead and do about half of them. Last but not least, cinnamon sticks. I'm just gonna take half of these, which smells so good, oh my gosh. Can't wait. Put those right in there. I've got this on kind of a well, high heat, but it's a smaller burner. I'm just gonna kind of do this until I smell the goodness, I will add these into a little baggie that I create and then put it into the stock. Just a little bit. Just gonna go ahead and flip these guys over. It smells like shell pal. Yeah, it kinda does, funny enough.
Does it smell good? Mm-hmm. Very good. So what we need to do, go get scissors, because we're going to make a little basket here. I want you to cut it right down this. Go get those spices, and you're going to put it right in the center. There you go. But what we're going to do is create a satchel. So we tie it up like this. Maybe, yeah. It's a little bit thicker than normal. Maybe I don't need it to be that thick. Go ahead and pull that. Pull that string. There you go. There you go. Pull it tight. Good. See, that's, that's going to keep all the spices in there without going in there. Can I put it in? Yeah, you can. You totally can put it in. Now I'm going to double knot this. You want to release it or you want me to do it? Watch, it's going to release it. Okay. I just released the pressure. It's good to open. You have to be very careful with a pressure cooker. Oh my gosh. Let me just show you what it looks like real quick. There's a lot of fat in there. There's a lot of goodness in there. The oxtail is definitely the cooked up. Is super big. But we're only about halfway is there. How big? I've got the stock pot here. It's in the sink because it's so big. I don't want to spill. This one's going to strain out all the little bits. That one's just going to catch anything else. You definitely don't want to waste this. So be very careful when you're doing this. Oh, baby. You know, I already strained a lot of it. There you go. Oh, yeah. Look at that meat right there. Ooh, baby. A lot of connective tissue, a lot of protein, a lot of flavors. In addition to this, I'm gonna go ahead and add all these bones. You know what though? You know what? I don't care. I'm gonna put them back in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the meat off the bigger ones. And then what I'll do with the smaller ones, is I'll continue cooking those in here. Uh, they're just gonna basically melt away. This, I'm gonna bring back to the stove and I'll show you what I'll do to finish this. Okay, so I have no idea what I'm doing here, but uh, I've got a huge stock pot. It's ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and add all the ingredients to this. So first we're gonna turn up the heat. Place that one in first, good. And then what you're gonna do is put these in there too. You, you should probably use the tongs. Don't drop it in. Go real close to the bottom, there you go. Do it with all of them. Okay, good. Now go grab those bottles of water over there by the toaster oven. Fish sauce. Why don't you smell it and tell me what you think of the smell? Okay, then pour some in. The whole bottle? No, definitely not the whole bottle. Just like a little splash. Don't touch the pot. One more of those. Maybe one more. That's good. MSG. Pull the whole bottle? Definitely not. Shake, shake a whole bunch of it in there. Yep. One, two. How like a whole bunch. Just keep going. I'll tell you when. A little bit more. Okay, that's good. That's now the sugar. No, here, here, here you go. I think that's plenty. That's plenty. There. No, put it in there. Never put it back in there. And then the salt. There you go. Good. I'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> okay, go ahead and stir it with these. And you're gonna stir it. Smelly, smelly. It hits my nose. <laughs> You're so hot.
Okay, it's past midnight right now, and the timer went off a while ago for this. So this is partially frozen. I'm gonna cut it thin, but the soup stock on the stove, and I'm gonna let it cook for another probably 20 minutes. After I get this prepared, I'm gonna prepare all the toppings, and hopefully this, this, okay. and the noodles I'm gonna cook with the toppings can make for a deliciousness. <laughs> because I'm hungry and I also want to go to bed. But I'm doing this because I want Judy to try this in the morning too. Can I wake her up? What's that? Are you gonna wake her mommy? Heck no. So we're pretty close to finishing. I'm prepping all the toppings right now, but I want to do a little taste test. Ready? Mm. Go ahead and you taste it. Do you like it? I do. I think it needs a little bit more salt. Just a tiny bit more salt. Maybe not salt, maybe flavor. More flavor? I know what to do. I saw a trick that two Vietnamese people did. Two different cooks. Totally different lifestyles, <laughs> totally different professions, totally different skill levels. And they added this one thing. They added this. Now, is this completely a cheater move? I don't know, but I saw them do it. So I'm gonna do it now. What is it? It's basically beef soup boiled down to its simplest form. Yeah, it's like curry. Curry is just curry condensed down. Add about that much right in there and I think we need more salt too I'm also gonna add a little bit more fish sauce there we go there we go good job that's plenty Kind of past your bedtime, you know that, right? Are you tired? Are you sure? <laughs> this just removes all the uh, moisture. Cilantro. What's that? How? Okay, so noodles are in. Kira is very sleepy and very hungry. Leah's not sleepy. I don't want these spices to overwhelm the broth, so I'm gonna take it out. <laughs> if anything, I'm making a very subtle pho broth because the girls really aren't familiar with pho. Me and Judy, we love pho. Smells great, but I want it to be kid friendly, so. We're just doing some noodles for Kira. You tell me what the flavor is like, okay? Try the broth and then the noodles. Oh no, at the restaurant they do this ahead of time. Is it good?
Everybody's asleep. It's 1.30 a.m. I'm finally gonna plate this pho and eat it for myself. For the toppings, I've got the ribeye steak that I cut real thin. Then I got the meat that I removed from the oxtail. Then I got the toppings. I showed you the green onions, the bean sprouts, the basil, cilantro. I did not show you the thinly sliced onions. And of course, the lime. Finally, look at that. Whoa, Nelly. A little bit of that lime. Can't spray it too far away. Oh yeah, get a little of that basil, a little of that onion, a little bit of that cilantro, maybe a little bit of that oxtail. Get one big old bite. There you go, baby. Finally. Mmm. My God. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Get some of that. Get some of that meat right there. Mmm. 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 -hmm. Mixing those green sprouts. All right, let's see how. Mmm. See, a lot of people they remove that fat. I want that fat in there. Oh my God. Oh my God. Subscribe if you love food, because I'll be sharing all my food adventures in here. Comment below, what should be my next first time cooking recipe video? Appreciate you. Hopefully you guys are inspired to try this. I'm gonna cook this a few more times. Mm. Only took me five hours.